For two weeks in December 2009, world leaders are gathering in Copenhagen for what will surely prove one of the most historic meetings of our time. In the face of clear evidence that human activity is profoundly changing the climate of the world we live in, we face a stark choice. We can continue business as usual while trying to make a few incremental improvements to the way we currently manage our resources, or we can decide to take a radical new approach to our stewardship of this planet. An approach that would not just benefit ourselves, but would help safeguard the future of many diverse species and complex ecosystems that make up this wonderful world. As Secretary General of the International Telecommunication Union, I know that proactive deployment of modern information and communication technologies is a key part of this new approach. Studies show that more widespread use of today's technologies represent a highly cost-effective strategy that could cut global emissions by as much as 15% by 2020. Put simply, information and communication technology is the single most powerful tool humankind has at its disposal to avoid potential climate catastrophe. I therefore urge COP15 delegates to look to the high-tech sector and to take maximum advantage of the power of ICTs to reduce emissions in every country worldwide. At Copenhagen, we have a real and reachable opportunity to fight climate change and preserve our environment. But time is running out. We need to make good use of every weapon in our armory. In terms of global emissions, ICT equipment is only a tiny part of the problem, but it can be a huge part of the solution. Through next generation networks, through new standards for energy efficiency, through satellites climate monitoring systems, through national and cross-border broadband initiatives and technologies to support smart grids, smart homes and smart cars, ITU is striving hard to deliver new tools that can make an even bigger difference. During the second week of the COP15 conference, I will be meeting with heads of state from around the world at the Bella Center to persuade them of the power they have to effect real change right now through better use of information and communication technologies. I have no doubt that all delegates understand what is at stake. It is vital that they do not miss the chance to harness the tremendous power of ICTs to change today's climate-hostile paradigm. 